Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make these high performance acoustic panels to control the echo and reverberation in your room. These will perform as well or better than the pre-built panels and foam you can buy online and they're also much cheaper at around 20 to 40 pounds per panel depending on the materials you choose. I'll start with a quick overview of the design followed by all of the steps in detail and at the end of the video I'll do a quick before and after of the sound of this room with and without any acoustic panels. So let's get right into it. I want to start by just saying you can change the size and thickness of these panels to suit your room, but I will of course be sharing the exact measurements I'm using in the description down below. I'll also be sharing all of the materials I'm using, including this fabric that's available in loads of different colors, so you don't have to just make a black panel like I've got here. You can build this only using hand tools, and if you don't have all of the tools you need, there's a few ways to work around it that I'll share in the next part of the video. So let's outline this build first, and then I'll go into all of the details. The first thing we're gonna do is build this very strong, solid wooden frame. This is gonna be the real backbone of the panel, and it's gonna be doing all of the load and weight bearing of the panel. Then we're going to attach these side panels at whichever depth you need. Now these are not a structural part of the build, they're sort of just to give it shape and to hold the acoustic insulation in. So the next step is to attach a fabric backing to hold the insulation in. When we've done that we fill it with our chosen safe acoustic insulation, a lot more about that later. Then we wrap it all up with our fabric of choice. Again, there's loads of colors to choose from. We make it all neat, make sure it's all tucked in nicely, and then we add whatever mounting method we want. In this case, I'm just using these sort of hooks and some picture wire. And at this point, you can just hang it from a single hook on your wall. And finally, as an optional extra, you can add an external wooden frame purely for aesthetic purposes. So now that I've given you an overview of what the build looks like, let's get into all the little details. Now I've added chapter markers or timestamps to this video so you can just sort of follow along one section at a time and also easily navigate back to the part of the video where you're at. But the first step is to make a very strong wooden frame like this. Many designs start with large and wide planks of square planed timber like this to build their frame, but unfortunately this leads to quite a flexible panel and it's actually much easier to create a stronger frame by using thinner pieces of wood. And I know this is probably hard to believe, but if you lay up the panels right, you create a frame that can take a huge amount of stress and strain and be very lightweight while it does it. So I've chosen 120 by 60 centimeters because that's the size of the insulation in my country. If you're in America, it's probably easier to go with four foot by two foot. So just work with your local materials. The wood I chose was sold in lengths of 180 centimeters. So this meant that there was very little waste. I sort of just had to use two of those per panel. So 100 and 20 and 60 across, cutting a little bit extra off each end to make sure that it was 60 from here to here. And it's very important that this longer one meets at the top here and that this top piece is the shorter one because this here is gonna be taking all of the load, all of the weight in the design. So you want to make sure that it's laid up like this. I assembled the corners with simple 90 degree joints. I pre-drilled, which helps avoid your screws splitting the wood. And if possible, use a countersink to make sure that when you drill those screws in, everything lays up really nice and flush to the surface of the wood. You should only need to use one screw per corner. If you find you're using more than that, I'd probably look for a higher quality screw that really bites into the wood a little bit better. And the final part of building the frame is to attach these sort of picture hanging hooks about one foot down from the top of the panel. As long as they're the same distance on both sides, you're good. I attach these now because it's much more difficult to attach it later. After assembling the frame, we're going to attach these sideboards. Now there's lots of materials you can use here. You could choose to use a very thin ply board, say just two or three millimeters, or a particle board, similar to what I've got here, or to be honest, any thin board material that you can staple or hammer to the side. What I chose to do was buy one large sheet. Almost any DIY store or timber merchant will be happy to cut both your timber and these boards into your desired shape and size, as long as you have the dimensions that they need and it's relatively straight cuts. And again, all of the dimensions and measurements are written in the description down below uh, with a step-by-step -step guide so that you can't really go wrong. But again, you're, you're choosing this to be the thickness of the insulation you have and the thickness or depth that you want the final panel to be. 
I used wood glue and some nails to secure these boards in place, but I found later through making more of the panels that just using a stapler seems to work just as well, or maybe even better. So try something and see if it holds, you know, give it a bit of a pull. Uh, and obviously if it comes off, try a different method, but you can get creative with it. I probably wasted quite a lot of time hammering all of these nails in when the stapler just did it in a few seconds. And the final touch here, but something very important, is to finish off the corners with a little bit of tape. I'm using black fabric, so black tape makes sense, but if you're choosing a lighter fabric, maybe just stick with clear tape. This prevents the corners cutting or pulling any of the fabric. The next step of the build is to seal the back of the panel first, which is maybe a little bit counterintuitive, but I'll explain why. So the panel has a front, which is here, the side that's just got the board, and the back of the panel is the side that has our strong wooden frame. We're going to actually fill our panel from the front, so the first thing we have to do is add a fabric backing to the inside of this back frame. Here, I've tried lots of different fabrics, but I find the best one is actually just a gardening fabric, which is a soft fabric weed barrier. It's incredibly strong. None of the acoustic insulation is gonna pass through this, and it's also incredibly affordable. I usually have some of it lying around, but it costs about five pounds for 10 or 20 meters of this fabric. So after cutting that to size, I stapled it in from the front side of the wooden frame to make sure that we left an air gap at the back that I'll show you just here. Now we're moving on to one of the most interesting parts of the video, at least for me, and that is the filling material, the acoustic insulation. Now there's several different products I use. Again, I've listed them in the description down below. These will vary by your region. But firstly, and most importantly, I do not recommend using rock, mineral, or glass fiber wool. And these are the most commonly recommended and used, but I believe they're simply not safe for health. To start with, you need to use a lot of protective equipment simply to handle these materials. If they get anywhere near your skin, eyes, your nose, your throat, they're so uncomfortable and unhealthy to be around. Now I'm speaking mostly from my own experiences of using these fibers, even with a lot of protective equipment, I've found them to be personally quite damaging. And I think there's lots of safe alternatives that are usually pretty affordable as well. Some of them come in at the same cost and many of them far outperform those other materials in terms of the acoustic absorption. So my favorite safe insulation products are firstly recycled denim slabs. So it's pretty much made with old jeans and mixed in with some other fibers. But these are pretty high density acoustic and thermal insulating slabs. Depending on which country you're in, these are gonna be either very easy to get hold of or almost impossible. So my next favorite would be a hemp or a wood fiber insulation slab or just a general high density recycled foam and fabric fabric panel. The density is going to be incredibly important, so this will be listed on the specification sheet in kilograms per meter cubed. Now most of these products come in at around 20 kilograms per meter cubed, but if you can find one that's maybe closer to 30, that's going to be great. Once you reach 40 and 50 kilograms per meter cubed, you're usually getting an incredibly dense panel that can become quite difficult to work with. For these particular panels, I'm using a high density recycled foam and fabric panel. I could just buy this in just a few slabs at a time. I didn't want to order 10 or 20 of these denim slabs when I only had to make one or two more panels. The insulation you get will likely fit right away. Unfortunately, I made a mistake, and that is that it said it was 60 centimeters, but my slab was actually generously oversized at about 62 centimeters, so I had to cut a little bit off the side. But if you get those denim panels or the hemp panels, they should just fit right in because they'll be a little bit more squishy. When you're ready to cover the front of your panel, I'd recommend using another layer of that membrane if you're using a rock or mineral wool a fiber slab, although I really don't recommend working with those materials. And the finishing fabric I'm using is from Chimera and it's called Kara. It's available in lots of different colors and it's an incredibly heavy duty but easy to work with fabric. And I find the darker colors are brilliant at covering up any imperfections. They're just so easy to work with. The fabric is about five pounds per meter, but it's wide enough that you can actually cut it uh, to cover two panels at the same time. In fact, you know what, I'm just gonna show you. This is what I mean. It's gonna come in a really long roll like this. So you can see you could actually easily get two panels covered with the width of one roll, which means that when you're looking at an 120 centimeter panel, the cost comes out at about three pounds of fabric per panel. Although I'd recommend buying a little bit extra because you'll probably want to experiment with it. 
But what I like about this fabric, as I've said before, it's so easy to work with. I've messed up a few of these panels when stapling and you can easily just remove the staples and try again. So here I'm gonna lay out the panel front side down. I've got a bit of a generous overlap on each side and you'll see that when you cut the fabric, you don't even need to cut it very neatly because we're gonna fold it over and then tuck it underneath to make a really nice neat line. It's gonna look exactly like you know what you're doing. So the method here is to simply line up and staple one side and then put a small amount of tension, pull it over a little bit and then staple the other side. The trick here is to just take your time, line up a corner, fold it over, try again and again. If you're a little bit of a perfectionist, this could take a while. Just take your time and it'll all work out fine. The final step is to add some picture wire between those two hooks. Just tie it off nice and tight and then hang it from any hook rated for the weight. If you're renting your studio or you think you might have to move to a new location, it's really easy to just put in a picture hook and take it out and it causes very minimal damage to the wall. You can easily just cover that up with a little bit of paint. Whereas when the panels become much heavier, you have to start using a more permanent fixing solution and that can look quite messy when you take it off the wall. The finished panel will hang on your wall with a slight deliberate air gap at the back, which does increase the acoustic performance. You could increase the size of this air gap if you want. You could actually add maybe some little studs on the corners just to raise the panel away from the wall, but I didn't opt to do that. And as a final optional last step, you can add this wooden frame on the outside. It's just the same as constructing that inner frame. You cut it to size, but this time I opted to use nails instead of screws because aesthetically, I think they look a little bit better. Now, although this does look pretty good, there's two reasons why I don't do this. The first is the cost where I live. Adding this much extra wood to the panel costs about 20 pounds extra per panel. It's just what's happening with the price of timber. These days, it's a little bit insane. And the second thing is the weight. So the thick panel on its own weighs about five to six kilograms. That just depends on the insulation you put in it. When you add this frame, immediately it goes up to 10 to 11 kilograms. And hanging that from your wall, I mean, it's not like very heavy to pick up, but when you hang that from your wall, that's a lot of strain. So if you are gonna go down this route, I'd probably look at a different mounting method that's potentially a little bit stronger and more secure. I'm going to take all of these panels off the wall in just a moment so we can do a sound test with and without. Now I'm gonna try and make sure that I'm about the same distance from the microphone. I know this is by no means scientific, but this is the sound of the room with my voice picked up on this microphone with the acoustic treatment. Hopefully it sounds balanced and the reverberations are in check. So just making sure that I'm about the same distance from the microphone, hopefully you can hear the difference without the panels. So that's everything for this video, but if you have any questions or comments about the build or any of the materials used, or you're looking for advice on your own materials, leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to help you out and help you find something that's gonna work for your room. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you have a great week and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.